You're listening to episode 825 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode is entitled, Love is the Measure, given on the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time, 2022. Today we continue to hear from St. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians. In fact, we pick up exactly where we left off last week, if you might remember. This may be one of the most popular of scriptures, this section. It is often called the love chapter because it so beautifully reflects on the qualities of love. It is certainly beautiful and poetic. It is also one of the most challenging and personally helpful chapters in the New Testament, at least for me. The latter part of chapter 12 and all of chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians confronts our basic notions and beliefs about love. It is very popular. I mean, think about this. Did you use this scripture passion passage for your wedding? How many uses for your wedding? Yeah? Do you remember getting married, right? Okay. It's the greatest hit of all the readings. But it is actually far removed from the romantic notion that we often consider to be love. This section offers us a personal inventory tool, if you will, or maybe better, a scale by which we can weigh ourselves in terms of how much we love or don't love. If you might, I'd like to try examining it myself with you and see which ones I pass on or how I'll grade myself upon. And, and it's, it's telling to do so when you have a person in mind. And no, it can't be that wonderful person that you think the highest of. I want you to think of the person that you're maybe even right now struggling with. Don't elbow your spouse. But someone that you just don't like. Someone maybe you have a ruptured relationship with. And measure this against that. And by the way, if you're dating, this is also excellent uh, can, you know, a, a tool to discern, is this person truly loving me or is it something else? So those persons and situations may be revealing to us, especially if it's someone that we don't like or has hurt us. So here we go. And in fact, you might even say, where it says love, put your name in there possibly. Or put the name of the other person in there. So like, love is patient. You might say, Bill is patient. I'd say that to myself. I'm patient. Or maybe it's the other person. Love is patient. Am I patient with those who are not patient with me? Because remember, love is patient. Love is kind. Am I kind to those who are not kind in return to me? Love is not jealous. Do I harbor jealousy for another person's relationships? Or am I envious of their things, abilities, beauty, or riches? Am I shackled by the jealousies and envies in my life? Love is humble. Am I humble? Especially in the face of those who are arrogant? Am I arrogant? Or do I offer false humility, which is actually arrogance in disguise? Feigning humility. All I need is a button pushed and I... Love is not pompous, inflated, or seeks its own interests. Do I brag about myself? Or think that I am more important than others? Am I unaware that there's always somebody smarter than me? Must I always come first? When dividing the food, do I always give myself the bigger share? 
Or do I do the opposite and take the lesser? Do I have something more important to say than anybody else all the time? Love is not quick-tempered. Am I often out of control with my emotions? Lashing out to those around me? Am I finding myself alone a lot? Possibly because no one wants to be around me? Am I just an angry person? Am I triggered when someone yells at me? And so I scream back even louder. It is telling that how we behave with our enemies, because it's our enemies that we are often quick tempered with, or just short tempered, maybe. But we're called in Luke 10, verse 27, one of the hardest of them all. Love your enemies. Love does not brood over injury. Do I hold resentments? Churning them over and over? About how right I am and how wrong the other person is? Do I add some fertilizer so I keep it growing? Am I enslaved by sadness or anger that keeps the resentments simmering? Always trying to justify myself. Is it impossible that I could ever be wrong? When's the last time I made a mistake and said, I'm wrong? Please forgive me. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Have I been happy that someone cheated or screamed at another person? Or was calling them names? Have I ever enjoyed it when someone assaulted another person? They deserved it. Did I defend someone who I knew was lying? Have I covered up my own tracks in my lies? Did I take delight in the destruction of another person's property or reputation? Did I take pleasure in hurting others? When the other team lost, did I rejoice in their failure? Or did I lift someone up? Someone who did something courageous? Did I remind someone about the truth about themselves and how precious they are in the eyes of God? Did I congratulate someone who beat me in a sporting event? Or a friend who has the opposite team who beat my Steelers a couple weeks ago? Frankie? I texted her. Congratulations to your Chiefs. It's just a game. Especially when my team loses. <laughs> Love bears all things. Have I stayed close to my spouse or friends even when he or she was maligned? Or they maligned me? Or try to cut me out or accuse me of mistakes and bad judgments that I have made? Have I canceled someone out of my life because of a disagreement? Do I do the same for others when they have failed to live up to my standards? 
Love gives us the ability to hope in the most saddest times. Yesterday's mass, funeral mass for Polly Kachark, was an example of that. Chris Kacharik was right here sharing about his beloved bride in a way that shows he's mourning, but there's something greater at foot. He has hope because of his faith. At the death of a close friend or family member, love gives us the knowledge and consolation of God's mercy. And love overcomes it all. Love gives us the power to endure the injustices that come from others' actions. It empowers us to do the right thing in response. It gives us words to say that will help. Reflecting on this chapter of love from St. Paul can help reveal to us if a friend is truly a friend. And it'll help me to know if I'm one too. For we know if we want a friend, we need to be a friend. If I want love, I must be loving. This is where it becomes a a wonderful litmus test for ourselves and for our relationships. And where it has gone wrong, where maybe some of these things I mentioned, you would have to say, "Mm, failed here, failed there. There's a thing called a course correction. And it comes with grace from God. And in fact, the more profound the course correction, the more grace is needed. Because it's hard to change. It's hard to recognize that we've not been loving. And then change. You see, God can do amazing things. St. Paul himself knows this. We heard recently in the scriptures about how he was leveled to the ground, challenged by Jesus himself, And Paul's reaction was one of humility, even though he was a very arrogant man. So go forth from this church this evening and love. Put on love and measure how it is present or absent in your life. From there, our homework continues. Will we strive for the higher way or not. And when we do not, God has given us the sacrament of reconciliation. It's a great way just to ask when thinking, do I need to go to confession? A quick question would be, where have I failed to love? How's that for simple? May God give us all the grace that we need to be loving hope-filled, and faith-filled. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bills Podcast. A little bit of um, inside our community uh, information. I mentioned Frankie. She's uh, our former principal, and she's a big Kansas City Chiefs fan, and often her Chiefs and my Steelers uh, meet, and who knows what happens. Of course, uh, we kid each other around, and I certainly support her. Uh, one year, um, this is several years back when she was our principal, I, uh, for Christmas, got her a, a big, red, beautiful Chiefs sweatshirt, uh, and uh, just congratulated her, and I encourage it. It's fun. It's uh, Obviously, they are the best team, I think. I, I'm going to predict they go to the Super Bowl. And I bet they'll win it all. Um, but we'll see. Last week was pretty amazing against Buffalo. Uh, who would have known that would have turned out the way it did? That was probably the best game of the whole year. But in the meantime, uh, if you have any questions or comments about the homily or anything about the faith, I just want to encourage you to go to my website, fatherbill.org. That's F-R-B-I-L-L dot org. 
and there I can uh, email you. I can you'll see things that are, uh, or you guys that you can email me, and you can see what's going on in my uh, Facebook page and other social media, and I uh, will just go from there. In the meantime, may God bless you. Have a great week. Stay safe. Bye bye.